got to start. Sure, mm -hmm. Now I'll call this regular meeting of the Jackson City Council to order. I want to welcome all of the folks that are here in attendance tonight and also the, the folks that will be watching on G10 television. To begin our meeting tonight, we're going to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by uh, invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we pause. We pause to give you thanks. Thanks for this day. Thanks for the blessings and benefits you bestow upon our city and upon each of us individually. We pray this evening for all those that have been affected by the wildfires wild in Maui and Hurricane Hillary in the western United States coast. We pray for their recovery and for those who have lost lives. As we're now in the midst, in the center of the hurricane season, we continue to pray that through your providence that you would protect this fragile coastal area that we call home. Yes. Thank you. Protect our property and our individuals you, and keep the storms and the hurricanes away. Mm -hmm. Protect us, Lord. Jesus. And as always, we pray for our military who are serving us here and around the world, those in harm's way for their anxious families. And always, Lord, give guidance and direction to your mayor and to your council. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 All the while, let's take it for a second. I've been in the groups. I just want me to stand. Council, this time I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. Move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Next, we have uh, minutes. I'm sorry. Next, next, we have our first section of public comment. And uh, as far as the rules of public comment are concerned, uh, you can speak up to three minutes, and when we, we have a timer, uh, to be fair, we try to go by this, this rule the council's made, and uh, each person will have three minutes to, to speak. So the first person that's on the list is Mr. Keith Williams. Council members, I want to thank you so much. I know many times you do not hear. Thank you for what you do for our city. I just want to say thank you so much for your support in getting Sandy Run up and going. Today's been an exciting day. Uh, we went over at about 9 o'clock this morning. We have the media center set up. Uh, we have everything ready for a grand opening on Saturday uh, and an after-school program that will begin uh, Monday afternoon. So uh, I wanted to come today just to mainly say, once again, on behalf of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern North Carolina, we couldn't have done it without your support. Uh, I've been looking for this endeavor to uh, come to fruition for probably about three and a half years now, and now we're there. Uh, Sandy Run, it, I've, I've told everybody it's going to be a win, win, win. It's going to be a win for Sandy Run, it's going to be a win for the city of Jacksonville, and it's going to be a win for the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern North Carolina. Uh, I just have to tell you a story. We were in there setting up today, and this little gentleman, he's an uh, elementary school over at Commons Elementary. His name is Khalil. That's as far as I'll go. But he walks in the front door, and he says, Wow, y'all are rich. I said, What's rich? He said, You have pl four PlayStations in this building. I said, No, you're rich. You have a young, healthy body. We can replace these PlayStations. You are the rich one. But... uh he went home and got three friends and came back and wanted to know if we had a ball team. He wants to be a part of the ball team. And I said, buddy, all that's coming. Just bring your friends on Monday and sign up. But, again, I just want to say thank you for what you guys have done in supporting that. 3 o'clock Saturday, it's going to be from 3 to 7. 
uh, is our back to school bash, as we want to call it. We're going to have hamburgers, hot dogs, bouncy houses, a DJ. We're going to have the Dare uh, car there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people come out and visit. We'll probably have 40 or 50 staff members. They're expecting anywhere from 100 to 150 people. So we just want it to be a meet and greet. We want everyone to come out and be a part of that community because uh, it is an exciting time. And uh, I just want to once again say thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions for me? I'm sorry. Questions for Keith? Yeah, I just want to thank you for what you guys are doing for that community. I've worked in that community for a long time. I worked to try to work with Boys and Girls Club to get, get them out and get you guys out there. So I'm so glad that you were able to do all that you're doing for us. So we really appreciate what you've done. Well, thank you. Staff. If you come there and it doesn't do your heart good, something's wrong with your ticker. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Ms. Kaver Clark. Ms. Clark? Now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, first of all, I don't know whether it's not on the agenda what I need to speak about. And I don't know whether I will be allowed. But anyway, good afternoon to the board, the city council. Good afternoon to the mayor and all the people on the podium. I wanted to talk about past projects. And uh, what I'm saying is this, that uh, projects that have been for the city that you know, they come in with glorious things that's going to happen with these projects. The first one I want to mention is the uh, Sturgis City. You know, when it came for between 40 and 50 years ago, it was supposed to do so much for Jacksonville. And the fish people would be coming from Charlotte by the busloads. All the hotels would be filled in Jacksonville. It never happened. And just a few years ago, we just started getting in revenue from uh, the project. And so this is what I want to say, that we need to look at things before we get people all excited about what it's going to do for the city and the income that it's going to bring in. The next thing, the county and the city went together with the uh, soccer ball uh, area in uh, <clears throat> Maysville. And that was going to bring in so many people that we would have to use hotels from uh, Newburn and the surrounding areas uh, to fill uh, the hotels and the people that would be coming. That never happened. And I thought of this when we were talking about, when you were talking about the baseball team. And I was saying to myself, I hope that our hopes won't be uh, so high looking forward to bringing in revenue from the um, baseball team that is uh, a project that's supposed to come in. And think about what it's going to do and stop getting us all wound up and being excited about projects that take years and years to come to fruition. And sometimes it never happens. And so, you know, that's why we have a rear view mirror on our cars so we can look back and see what has happened in the past so we won't make the same mistakes in the future. I forgot to tell you, my name is Kiva Clark. I live on Armstrong Drive here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And those are the things I want you to think about as you go forward with all of your big ideas and projects. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go now to uh, the adoption of the minutes for um, move approval as presented. And, and the consent items. And the consent items. Second. 
Any discussion? Here not all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay. That'll bring us to our first item here in the non-consent items is a public hearing for the annexation of 4336 Western Boulevard. And Mr. Massey is going to present this item. Mayor and Council, on behalf of Jacksonville WWLLC, Kimberly and Horn Associates has submitted a petition for a voluntary annexation of 2.2975 acre tract that is contiguous to the current city limit boundaries. The property is located at the corner of Carolina Forest Boulevard and Western Boulevard. The developer proposes to build a Wawa gas station and convenience store. The financial analysis shows a positive cash flow over a five year period of approximately $102,000. Uh, staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. If there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Council, any questions of Mr. Mass? Sir? Uh, I have two actually. So I'm assuming DOT, I mean, are they gonna control that traffic? Cause that traffic in that area is pretty bad as it is. So I mean, I guess they're gonna handle that, like the turns and everything coming off of the gas station. Cause it worked, they come through Carolina Forest now, it's pretty congested there now. Are they gonna add lanes for turning, I'm assuming? No, there, there won't be any improvements done on Carolina Forest. They'll have to, basically their location, their driveways are controlled in the, in the back of the property. And Anthony, you're, Anthony, you're can comment on specifics, but there's there have been long range plans on the connectivity on the back side of the property to the parallel road that's on the other side uh, over there by Walmart and that. So it's all going to be, you know, forced, they're going to be forced to fit into that plan. Anthony, do you have any other? Good evening, Mayor and Council. So as part of the review process for the site plan, a traffic study was done for this particular site. Uh, the good thing about both Carolina Forest Boulevard and Western is that they're what we call limited access, mm -hmm. which means that they'll have restricted driveway access on both Carolina Forest and Western. So because they will have a right in, right out on both of those facilities, we really don't anticipate the traffic to be that big of a deal, especially since a lot of this is going to be what we call pass by trips. People who are already driving through the area that are just kind of dipping in to get gas and whatnot. Where will the so. inferences be on that map up there? So do you see where it says U-turn, sir? sir? Right. Um, the right in, right out driveway will be just north of that, if I recall. And then the point over on Western where it's pointing towards Gum Branch, uh, there will be a right in, right out as well. Will there be some kind of curbing or anything there that would restrict somebody from turning the opposite way? Oh yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay. So you won't. Be, so if you're coming off of Western, going down Carolina, Carolina Forest, there'd be no way to go left in there and cross traffic. All that would be blocked. I'm assuming. You'd have to go down and make a U turn. U turn and, and come, come back. back. Okay. Yeah. So, so no, frankly, there, if you're coming that way, the best way would be just carry on straight on and then turn right into it, you know, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Where, where on Western would there be an entry point? Uh, so you see where the, uh, is the annotation on Lisa? Yes, it is. Somewhere right around in here. Okay. There'll now, be a, a right in, right out driveway. In the planning of that area over there, some of this is undeveloped, correct? That's yeah. correct, yes. Is there gonna be some connectivity there between those properties? Yes, sir. So there's actually a larger development concept uh, that's being planned behind here. Whether it happens or not, we're not really sure. But as part of our collector street planning, there will be, and it's off the map here, but I'll, I'll show you just for, to demonstrate the concept. There will be a parallel road to Western Boulevard, similar to what's over uh, near, um, not Texas Roadhouse, Longhorn. And Zaxby's and Brabham, I think is the name of it. That's right. Okay. So the intent is to alleviate some of the pressure there on, on Western Boulevard by having these backage roads so people can circulate instead of, uh, you know, just having to all be on Western. There's already some medians on, on Carolina Forest, yes. right? Yes. So there, the median will be continuous. <clears throat> Part of the requirement for the TIA, you see it says U-turn right there. Uh, that will be closed because there's too many conflicting movements today. 
uh, nonetheless an additional driveway over here to the Wawa. So that will be closed. And then again, over here, there's already a, the driveway is actually probably a little bit further to the south. And as you're aware, there's already a, a median out here. So. Any other questions? Did that satisfy you? Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, sir, my pleasure. Thank you. That's all okay. I have, Mayor. All right, so there's a public hearing required on this matter. At this time, I'll recess the regular council meeting and open the public hearing. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this uh, annexation proposal? All right. I don't see anyone. So this time, I'm going to close the public hearing, and we're going to consider uh, the annexation ordinance with staff recommendations. Mr. Mayor, yeah. I move that we uh, adopt the annexation ordinance as, as presented. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. That brings us to item number six. This is a legislative map amendment rezoning uh, from residential single family seven, RSF seven to corridor commercial. And this is on Trade Street and uh, Jacksonville Parkway, Jeremy Smith. And our planning department will present this item. Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. For you on the screen is a proposed rezoning for a portion of a tract of land along Jacksonville Parkway. This is popularly known in the area as the Tallman Track. It is actually on both sides of Jacksonville Parkway and also portions of Trade Street. <clears throat> This specific request that is before you tonight is only the portion of the property directly behind Lowe's Home Improvement, the multiple hotels over in that area, the uh, former Moose Lodge. The, that is the portion of the property that the City Council will be considering tonight. The portion of the property that directly abuts Long Acres Estates, uh, Oak, uh, I believe it's Oakview Estates and Sherwood Forest subdivisions is not up for consideration, is not proposed for a rezoning, and will remain residential as is. So you're talking about everything behind the hotels, commercial developments? Yes, sir. Okay. Just what's in the dark black outline? Correct. Okay. Um, however, state law, because it is all one parcel, state law says that we have to notify everybody that is adjacent to the whole parcel. Isn't there a barrier of some type? There is a that wall that goes along part of the Jacksonville Parkway. Where yes, is sir. it in? Um, I believe it is right through this area, and it may extend further or north or south than what I'm drawing, but it is along that area. I mean, I, I should know. Or actually, I, maybe I should be up here. Actually, more towards yeah. the housing area. The housing, I apologize. Yes. It is um, north there along Long Acres Estates uh, near the Branchwood Drive emergency access, and that the wall goes along there. Is that... Uh, that would be the orange uh, colored properties to the north. Okay. okay. Before you on the screen is a map from the Jacksonville Kema land use plan, which supports the rezoning of this property from residential single family to corridor commercial. Uh, more details on the proposed rezoning is that is approximately 21 acres of a 85 acre parcel of land if rezoned this combined with the existing corridor commercial around trade street would make approximately 54 acres of the 85 acres zoned corridor commercial I've got a, one more question yes sir the project site over here that they're wanting the rezoning for it how is it going to be accessing Jacksonville Parkway? That's a limited, or almost a zero access. Correct. That road. DOT, when they constructed the Jacksonville Parkway, identified specific locations along there that properties would have access. But while you do see a line here, this property is actually, these are one and the same property. So they will also have access onto Trade Street. If they, um, depending on what type of development they have, but DOT 
does have identified accesses for them or aid and access along the parkway. What about the left side? The left side, there is currently no access for them uh, to Moose Haven. There are some undeveloped tracks that I believe have been inquired upon to maybe partner. How much of that property is in the NC, NC DOT right away? Um, I don't believe any of the property is in the right of way. So none, none along that whole parkway? None, none of that, the uh, current property it is again split by the uh, parkway, um, but none of them exist within the right of way. Does it connect up there? To, is it exchange up there at the top? Is it a, connect a very small corner, but that would be part of the radius that turns into that driveway. Gotcha. So there couldn't it be, would an not be accessible there. for a driveway there. And while I do not have that, um, the solid information, I believe there is a um, DOT, DOT identified access along one of these areas uh, in, I've circled. My biggest concern there is the amount of volume, the volume of traffic that's on that roadway. And by adding additional driveway cuts, it's going, you know what that's going to yes, relate to. Um, Go ahead. Yep, I was going to say, I believe when the uh, DOT did the parkway, they identified those locations. And anything that hits that threshold of uh, further traffic demand study, traffic impact analysis, um, DOT and the city's transportation services department will look on, um, scrutinize heavily. So you're saying there is going to be access to that property from Trade Street? Without any specific proposals, they would have access on Trade okay. Street. Uh, before you on the screen is what the property would look like if it was rezoned. The Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board reviewed this request at their June 12th meeting, and they, along with staff, are recommending approval of this request, accepting that the evaluation found in the staff report um, finds that findings of fact A through J have been found in the affirmative and that the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities. Um, staff, along with representatives of the applicants, are ready to answer any questions that the council may have. Council, any questions? Of, of there are some, how, how many houses is on Moose Haven Road? There are, I believe, uh, three non-conforming single-family homes. They are currently zoned corridor commercial, but they have uh, been existing there for quite a number of years. They all got for sale signs in their yards. Not all of them do. Yeah. Those are the homes that remain after the bypass was constructed. I, I believe in uh, the development on the Western Extension and many, many, many years ago. Some of those residents were displaced, but these that were left behind was the one that was remaining. I know they remain as far as displacement. That was obviously before my time. That's on Moose, Moose Haven. Yeah, I know there's a 97-year-old lady at one of them. But, but, <clears throat> but that's, isn't that the that's... section between Trade Street and Marine Boulevard? where the residential property uh, the area are. i just circled is where the residents currently are the residential homes oh, yes, the, the current single family homes not on that side yeah. uh this property right here this would be the uh, new jaggers restaurant yeah they're already mm -hmm. there the former uh, state employees credit union here mm -hmm. and some undeveloped property through here the goodwill and then as you further right. uh, with the hotels and the Lowe's home improvements right. all right any other questions Jeremy? So at this time, Thank we'll you. go ahead and recess the regular council meet and open up the public hearing that's required on this. Um, is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? Okay. Is this Mr. Eustace, is it? Okay. If you go to this one right here. This is where you want to. Okay. Hey, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, my name is Mark Eustace. Uh, I am with the... I live in the Oak View Estates. I'm on that lower triangle. Uh, you see the big circle drive there. I'm by the RS7. Um, so one of the things that we have a concern with that is the site would go uh, commercial as projected. However, we are getting noticeable traffic noise going down that corridor. Uh, with, with the woods that got knocked down, it made it a lot more noisier. So I know that when we put the roadway in it was a lot quieter we had all invested money and in, in good time to 
to stay in that area in Oakwood or Oakview Estates. So our, our big major concern with myself and our neighbors is the fact that uh, with the sale of that, that's going to bring in more traffic, more noise in an area that wasn't, uh, didn't have that in the very beginning. Where is that at? I'm sorry, where, where is that at? I, I'm right here. Sure, here. There. Sure, okay. I'm in this area. Okay. Right. I know what you're talking about. Okay. And my neighbor, Mr. Adams, has already uh, made a written comment and sent that into the, the council for consideration. Is that wall constructed along the Jacksonville Parkway no, near sir, it's, you? It's along I mean, uh, the area up here, uh, and it's blind target. Mm -hmm. That's where that uh, noise vent wall is at. There's nothing after that that comes all the way down. Okay. Who's in charge of putting those walls up? DOT or DOT, DOT, DOT put DOT. it up as part of the Jacksonville Parkway project. And it was up there in the area where there are already existing residential properties. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'll, I'll add time to you there. Can I come up? Yes. <laughs> it's my wife, Penny. Okay. She's the friends of the outfit. So. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Would you please state your name and address? My name is Penny Eustace. Okay. Very good. Um, as my husband said, when they put the parkway in, the noise increased quite a bit into our homes. And most of us back there that bought these properties um, were looking as our retirement homes. These were where we we're going to grow old and have, you know, have our families age out and, and enjoy being really close within the city and convenient. But we felt like we were in the county. And then once the road went in, the traffic noise, all hours of the day and night, day you expect, but night you can hear motorcycles and other things running up and down. And with the ba the wall being north, we still get a lot of sound. Within the last five years, the Tallman family came in and um, sold the lumber off that RS7, RSF7 area, which also increased the noise. Um, our big concern is how it's going to impact the value of our homes going forward. Um, if the noise gets worse, and then what would happen if the other side of it gets rezoned as well? That was my big concern. Thank you. Is there anyone else wish to speak to this matter? Okay, thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, hold on just a minute. Oh. How many houses is that going to impact in that area? In our where section, um, there's only one plot that doesn't have a home currently built on it. All the, we all have roughly five acres of land um, within the Oakview Estates. Um, and then directly behind our home where you see, does it say Wright Street? I'm trying to see what that says. Here. Yeah, that's all new properties that have gone in and they've almost completely um, built homes in there now. For a long time there was only like three, but now there's quite a few. And there is a road you can see, um, I know they were talking about access roads and things, so there is a road that would connect eventually, I'm assuming, to the parkway. I haven't studied the um, DOT website to see for sure, but it's an open-end road. So that would also bring more traffic up and through those homes, neighborhoods. Mr. Ward, did you have something? Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, commercial interests are going to, they're going to want to develop, but we're going to want to protect our uh, citizens. I'm just wondering how we can, can get some sort of a noise barrier between the residential and the parkway. I know, um, you know, when I ran the last couple of years ago, the, uh, one of the, the, the individuals down in that section there, uh, complain to me about uh, the sirens at all hours of the night. And I know they hear it all the time, and uh, I'm sensitive to that. But um, I'm also in favor of, of commercial development, as you all well know. But uh, I certainly would like to see if we couldn't work out something to where we can get some sort of a wall, to protect some sort of a sound barrier to protect those folks from continued development along that parkway. And it's going to continue. Y'all can have a seat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing.
and uh, we'll have a little discussion here. Uh, Anthony, what are, are you still here? What are the, uh, what is the possibilities that DOT may show some interest as far as extending the sound barrier? Well, to be, to be honest with you, Mayor, I'm not really sure. Um, never had to deal with a, a sound wall after the fact. The, the reason that it wasn't constructed initially is because of, in fact, the, the vegetative barrier that was there when the parkway went in. And then that's generally the, the extent of their scope when they're building sound walls, uh, only where people currently are, not necessarily where they might be in the future. Uh, the good news is, is that we do have some other DOT projects in this area that may give us an opportunity to look at this from a, from a noise standpoint. Um, if it does warrant a sound wall, they will install it. So um, I feel like we have two different options. One, I can make contact with them now and see what the recourse might be. Uh, and then two, as we look at these other construction projects in the area, we can certainly continue to, to uh, try to add that to the scope of work. It also, uh, Mr. City Manager, there, uh, with site plans being developed and all for that piece of property, there are uh, barriers or some type That's of what I was just uh, gonna bring up. some type of uh, noise break or whatever Buffers. could be put in there. Buffer. Buffer. I'm, I'm just concerned that, a, that our our traditional um, buffer of 30 feet with vegetation is not not adequate at all uh, for those folks, and I I know that. That, that traffic is, uh, that property right behind them is going to develop at some point. Um, you know, it's, it's commercial. It certainly is, it, that's, that's what needs to be done from a public standpoint. But uh, we have to figure out some way of lessening the impact on the, the existing neighbors there. Anthony, I would like to see uh, city manager, <coughs> maybe a study where we look at some of the other communities mm -hmm. that's been affected by that. I know. Like you said, uh, I have a lot, had a lot of retirees in the community I, I um, live in, and I, I hear everything. Well, I mean, we were used to the sound of freedom, but just, uh, then everything <laughs> else opened up. And, and, and Raleigh is a good example. Uh, when you go around the Beltway there, they're, they're actually going back and retrofitting some of the areas with, mm -hmm. with yes. sound barriers uh, as they c continue to, to develop and grow, too. So. All of that is connected to enhancement projects that they're doing on their interchanges and their freeways and things like that. So we have the same opportunity here. I think the main challenge is the, the buffer probably is not going to be the end all be all. That's why we have the sound wall in the first yeah, place. Right. Um, but the sound wall probably will not be a short term solution. You know, it's going to be something that we're going to have to work on. Well, but I can I can definitely contact DOT and uh, provide feedback on what the process is. Well, I think I can speak from the most experienced on the council that those buffers are needed because where my house is with the bypass right to my house, there is no barrier. So I hear all and I smell all and that in and of itself is just noise pollution in and of itself and it just doesn't happen from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. It's constant 24-7. Now, earlier you said about entrances. Do they already have any to that other, to that backs up to that neighborhood as far as getting in? I'm trying to think what would possibly go in there because of entrance restrictions. Well, the entrances that I'm aware of right now, of course, I believe all of these are city streets. So we have mm -hmm. a stub that occurs there, another one that occurs here. And I believe, I can't remember if it's on this side or if it's on this side. There is one access point from Jacksonville Parkway to that it parcel. Is. It, it is. It, yeah. it is a right in, right out. You want me and to so it, comes out um, near the, um, it would be the just like all the other driveways that are out there. On Branch. Well, you, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to want commercial traffic accessing through the neighborhoods. As you I don't know. think you can. But, you it's know, a that's, special that's, sign that's not can. even a, a starter point, you know, <clears> so. Um, it's going to have to come off the parkway. And one other factor that we haven't even mentioned is that Jacksonville Parkway is going to be an extended roadway at some point. That's only going to increase the traffic. Well, 
fortunately or unfortunately, sir, that's that's why no, we I built know. That's it. That's good, you know? good news, bad news. I understand. But, so uh, there you know, is bad news. Alleviate some congestion on Marine Boulevard. Put it somewhere else. But uh, you know, again, I think our big opportunity here are the other improvement projects that are coming. Some of them are funded really soon, like within the next two to three years. Now, again, that's not a short-term solution but it is an opportunity where DOT has money and we'll be, we will be forced to look at that here. If we can get a, some sort of sound study, whatever is appropriate when they do that analysis, uh, you're absolutely 100% spot on. Tagging it with those existing projects is the best way to get it to happen any time yep. in the next decade. You know, it's just that's the closest, lowest hanging fruit we have to get something put in there. And, you know, the hotels and the commercial, you know, the businesses and, that are over there are not themselves a terrible noise producer the the largest offender if you will is the traffic on the parkway that's the biggest sound problem and increasing that traffic whether it's rerouting or adding another stop on the path is the challenge so the more we can do to buffer the noise from the parkway the better it all is because adding another building over there with a parking lot really isn't going to up the noise level it's the traffic on the parkway to get there and back that affects that so the more we can do around the parkway the better it is for everyone separating the commercial from the residential. Well, and, and I don't know if this is a good point to make or not, but I'll say it. The, uh, the sentiment with DOT has changed on sound walls. Uh, it used to be that they'll put up the cheapest, you know, generally the most ugly option that they have. Um, they didn't do that with the wall that we have out there, but they also didn't go with the most attractive either. So. You know, moving forward with these opportunities, that's something that we might want to consider too, is not only the sound impact, but the appearance. Aesthetic. Thank you. Any other input here? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Mr. Mayor, if I could, I would like to add with that remaining RSF7, the undeveloped that backs up to the neighborhood there, uh, staff would not support a rezoning if that request came through. Obviously, for anything, we would like to see it stay residential. And if it ever development develops under this residential zoning, a subdivision, have you. The current standards in the UDO would require any new residential subdivision to install a 50-foot buffer along that controlled access. So that's another addition that our UDO would add a, a protection there. Um, so if it were to ever develop under the RSF-7, a moderate-sized um, single-family subdivision, the developer would have to install a 50-foot buffer along that controlled access parkway. Okay. You get close to public hearing, didn't they? Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't leave the door over there. <coughs> We're being asked to uh, consider the pro proposed request to uh, entertain a motion one way or the other. I'm going to make a suggestion that I'm not sure if the sentiment is here to approve this proposed rezoning. And rather than close the public hearing, I wonder if we may consider postponing it for two weeks, a month, giving staff a chance to make contact with DOT to see what their plans are for possibly put, erecting a buffer. Mr. Carter? It, yes, sir. You, you closed it, but you can open it back up, Mayor, and leave it open if that's the council's direction. I'm not, I would ask Anthony, uh, I, do you think you could get some informative information for council to consider in the next month in reference to this since this is not developed at all, the RSF 7 property? Would they even be entertain, my question would be, a, a barrier here until that uh, is put in place because that development could be a barrier in and of itself. Sure, uh, sure. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, I would say within the next two weeks or so, we can commit to getting the process from DOT as to how they would consider installing, uh, whether they would and how they would consider uh, installing the sound wall. Um, this is not something that we're going to get a commitment for you know, within the next 30 days. It's just probably not going to happen, but we can certainly come back to you in two weeks or, or a month if you choose to, to give you more information on what it would be, what would be required to evaluate it and to have it approved. 
they would. Let's postpone it for a month. This is the public hearing mayor. It should be to the 19th. I'll make that motion to continue the public hearing till the uh, second meeting in uh, September. September. Second. Any discussion, any further discussion on that? For that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So. All right, that brings us to our section on reports for this evening, and I'll start with Mr. Jackson. Um, no report. Mr. Sosa? No. No report. Tim Bittner? Ditto. <laughs> Dr. Washington? No report. Just a public announcement. Yeah, public uh, Friday morning at 8 a.m. at the Lejeune Memorial Gardens is the Marfa Point Marine Memorial Observation. It is open to the public and you're encouraged to attend if you are able. And Saturday evening, the day following, there is a candlelight vigil um, by the Vietnam Memorial for the 13 service members we lost in Kabul. This is the second anniversary of their loss. So there will be a candlelight vigil on Saturday as well. Those are just opportunities. If you'd like to come show support, you're more than welcome to join us. Thank you for bringing that up. Mr. I want to say 6 p.m., sir. Yes, 6 p.m. Six. Proud to be here, Mayor. No report. Thank you. Mr. Ray. Well, let, city you want him to go first? I was pointing yeah. to Mr. Carter. I think it's yeah. more important, Mayor. Mr. Carter, you're up. Today. I'll be glad to go first. Yeah, I go again last. Um, because I do have a report this evening. <clears throat> As council and the citizens of Jackson were aware, there was a lawsuit filed against the mayor and council in the city as to how the mayor and council did the redistricting uh, of our city wards after the 2020 census. Judge Lewis. Judge Louise Flanagan, federal district court judge today, totally dismissed that lawsuit. The defendants, that is you and I, this, or the mayor and council, filed several different type of motions. But I think the one that goes to the heart of this, as far as motions to dismiss, I would like <coughs> to just point that one out to you. The crux, at least one of the primary cruxes of the plaintiff's arguments were that the council should redistrict based upon registered voters. They should take the base and they should divide it in four ways equally, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. Judge Flanagan, on that particular point, the one person, one vote claim says the following. The plaintiff's claim that the one person, one vote principle demands apportionment based on registered voters is foreclosed by the Supreme Court president. It is plainly permissible for jurisdictions to measure equalization by the total population of state and local legislative districts. Accordingly, the court declines to enjoin Jackson's apportionment scheme on these grounds. So again, the court, Judge Flanagan, uh, substantiated the way you, the mayor and council, approved the redistricting. And of course, you didn't approve that without a lot of folks putting a lot of time and effort into it. And I just want to mention some of those tonight because sometimes we forget. And I think this is uh, something we shouldn't. But from city staff, we had, of course, Dr. Woodruff, Mr. Massey, former clerk Carmen Miracle, Anthony Prenz, Terrence Braxton, Angelia Hogopian was our GIS uh, analyst. She's still with us, and she was a, uh, an essential part of this whole process. And Lisa Miller and all of her staff, Deanna Treble, who's no longer with us, and the actual members of our redistricting committee, Homer Spring, Kendrick Rogers, Glenn Hargett, Tiffany Choice, Ike Johnson, Adam Maddox, and if there's a sad moment this evening for me personally, and I'm sure for you, Mayor and Council, is that Ernie Wright is not here to see this. Mm -hmm. So I'll end this report like I ended an email today when I sent you the 12-page opinion of Judge Flanagan, and if any of you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to sit down and talk to you individually. But I believe this is a major victory for the Council's steadfast commitment in support of the ward system, which you have shown to believe supports good governance in the city of Jacksonville. Thank you. That's good news. Thank you for all your work on, on that, too. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I'll follow Mr. Carter, and I thought that was worthy of being first. Uh, we are excited about our, our one-city opportunities. You know, a lot of our challenges um, for the city staff is to be active throughout the community to see all the things that are going on. That's part of our mission 
as one city, we talk about not just what we do as a city, but what's going on within the community. Uh, you'll see that with a couple opportunities here. Uh, we gave you a little uh, heads up from, from our people. Firefighter Harris, uh, we, we labeled that as a, as a photo op. What that really is is an outreach effort. When you have kids that come around and they want to see what we do, uh, this is what we do each and every day. We, we not only fight fire, respond to calls, and save lives, but we also interact with our citizens. And that's an awesome opportunity to, to share the efforts of our citizens, of our taxpayers, and of our team in showing young citizens what we do every day and, and why we do it. So awesome, great uh, chance to see. You'll see Josh in the reflection of the truck there, which shows you how clean the truck is. Uh, he's getting a picture there because you hate to miss these moments. This is, uh, this is our team at their finest, and it's an awesome, an awesome time for us, especially for these kids because now they have to go back to school so they won't have as many opportunities. Um, this, this next item here is Narcan training for our hoteliers. If you recall, Chief Unero mentioned this before. This was an outreach effort as part of the opioid settlement. Uh, council decided to put money into supplying Narcan to hoteliers to try and alleviate loss of life due to opioid overdoses. That's a big deal, you know, and this is not something that, that the council takes lightly, that the team here takes lightly. Um, we had a couple people that were very uh, instrumental in making this happen, Heather Perkins and then uh, Sergeant Ramirez there. They're going through this training process with a number of different members of the community to talk about not only the impact of the opioids, but to talk about how we respond to these situations and how we save life. That's the purpose of our public safety each and every day is to preserve life inside of our community. And I think this was a, a fantastic outreach. Uh, I look forward to seeing more efforts in the years to come based on this funding source that we're receiving. We did have the opportunity to go to the Public Safety Awards uh, this past week. They're hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. This is an annual award ceremony. Uh, you'll see here there were four individuals that were recognized. The Law Enforcement Professional of the Year, uh, that's Deputy Brandon Moore. He's with the Sheriff's Department. <coughs> see Marie, uh, Raymond, she's the incoming president of the Chamber of Commerce. So you'll see her uh, around, but um, Deputy Moore received that recognition. Here you see one of our very own, you see Emily White. She's a telecommunicator too with our team. Uh, she received the telecommunicator of the year. Uh, very excited to be a part of that. Uh, one of the fun things about her is that she's done a lot of training this year. And as you know, telecommunication is not an easy uh, job to do within our city. So Ms. White's been there to help our team bring on new members. And that's why I believe she was given this award this year because she earned it helping bring along more te telecommunicators. Uh, right here, this is Charity Jordan. Uh, we're going to claim her as our own because she is the daughter of Michael B. Jordan, who is our deputy fire marshal. So therefore, we get to take this one as two awards for our team. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Jordan is with the May uh, Maysville Fire, and she won the Emer Emergency Medical Services Professional of the Year. Of the year. Very exciting. Uh, Mr. Jordan showed up in his matching shirt to, to give her that support. And then the uh, firefighter of the year goes to uh, Andrew Provost Jr., also of the Maysville uh, Fire Department. Uh, very exciting to be there and to see the recognition for public safety men and women throughout the community. Last thing I want to add is we did complete our public input sessions uh, here at City Hall, at Jackie Miette, and at the Commons. Uh, these are excellent uh, interactive meetings that provide communication opportunities for our citizens. For this topic, we're talking about recreation activities and we're talking about the 400-acre project. Those two things coexisted in an environment where we're bringing people into this atmosphere to give us their comments for directions. As we've said to everybody, our 400-acre project that we're working through with council and the community is not designed at this point. We wanted to bring this here because this is citizen interaction at its finest. You see JoJo here uh, asking some questions or maybe getting told what needs to happen there. <laughs> but we're really excited because a lot of people think that, that council and staff have a design for what these projects are going to be, what our recreation is going to look like over the next 30, 40 years. We don't have that design in place. We have the opportunity now to listen to our citizens who are going to help us 
figure out the path moving forward. Very exciting. You're going to see more public input sessions. Um, council, members of council are working on other public input sessions. So I just tell you, as the opportunity arises, we're going to be ready and available to listen to 72,000 plus citizens. So if you want to send them our way, send them our way. That's it, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, that I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Ty. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed.